this is a pretty easy problem. Um, 3.11. Um, if you still have the printout you got from um, last week, you can use that one or you can just read from here the problem statement. So that's the 3.11 um, in my version. So I'll just uh, formulate this uh, quickly. Um, so basically, in this problem, the first paragraph is all about some general information. Okay. Um, that uh, probably has uh, very little to do with our formulation. Okay. And it tells you that uh, in those mix, they really, um, so this, oh, this, this company has four types of feeds. That's specified here, feed one, two, three, four. That contains uh, different percentage of those corns, greens, and the minerals. Okay. And uh, the cost per pound for each of those feed um, differs too. And again, then on average, so this is the general information again, general information. We don't probably need to use it. Um, and uh, the chicken growers must ensure that they feed the uh, required nutrients to their flocks in the most cost-effective manner. Okay, so that probably indicates something for us. And AgriPro has just received an order from this local chicken farm for a thousand pounds of feed. Okay, and they want this feed to contain at least, okay, I would say, okay, that's a keyword for constraint, at least 20% corn, 15% green, and 15% minerals. What should this uh, company do to fill this order at minimum cost? How do they fill this order? They put a mixture of this feed one, two, three, four. And so the total is uh, 8,000 pounds, right? And in this 8,000 pounds, mm, by considering how many feed one, feed two, feed three, feed four to put in this fix, they want to make sure that uh, at least 20% of this 8,000 pounds is uh, corn, okay? And 15% uh, of this 8,000 is uh, grain, and 50% of this 8,000 pounds is uh, minerals, okay? So let's think about uh, what's the decision. It's very similar to that investment problem, right? So it's kind of like the same, it's a portfolio. So in that portfolio, it's like how many money you put in each of the bond issue. In this one, it's how much you put in each feed. Okay, feed one through four. It's kind of like a feed portfolio here. Okay, so and so that's the decision, how many pounds to put in this uh, total mix. Or you can use percentage again. Okay, but so we'll just make, we'll just use a pound. It's more straightforward this way. Okay, then that's our decision variables. And that's our decision, okay. Then what about the objective? We highlighted something here, right? Yeah, we want to do it the most cost effective way. That means we want to minimize the total cost. And that's because uh, the cost varies um, by meeting. So if there is no requirement for those percentage, we'll just put feed, one, feed four because that costs less money, okay? But uh, if we look at that, uh, the corn and the green percentage is pretty low here, 10%, 10%. We're not able to fulfill these uh, two requirements here. So we have to put some from maybe here or here. Okay, so then let me go to the next slide. So I summarized uh, um, those key information here. So I ordered 8,000 pounds. Um, these are the requirements and these are the given information. As we just said, the decision variables will be, so I'll just use F1, F2, F3, and F4. Oops to represent pounds of feed one, two, three, four, to put in the mix. <coughs> Then our objective function. Is to minimize the total cost. Which is pretty easy for you guys now. Okay, so it's the unit cost multiply 
the pound and you sum them together. So, oh sorry, I have to put two. We want to minimize total cost. So it would be 0.25 F1 plus 0.30 F2 plus 0.32 F3 plus 0.15 F4. Okay, so that's our objective function, minimize the total cost. Subject to constraints. Mm. So we're going to do that in this order here, okay? So the total order is a thousand pound, okay? That means uh, sum of your F1, 2, three, four, need to be equal to, or greater than equal to, 8,000. Because we defined them as uh, in pound. Right, right, this sum doesn't matter. Um, we put greater than equal to or equal to, when it calculate, it will be the same, because uh, we want to minimize the total cost. If we can fulfill the order by just uh, fulfill 8,000 8, pounds, then it will just fulfill 8,000 pounds. It won't go beyond that, okay? But as we explained last time, we put greater than equal to to make it less restrictive, so it's easier to find, uh, it's more possible to find a feasible solution. Okay, and then we'll look at here. Want this fit to contain at least 20% of corn. Okay, so that means, uh, okay, if you get F1 pound of feed one, that will give you 30% times F1 pound of corn. Okay, plus all the corns that you get from the other three feeds. So all the corns you get from these four feeds should be at least 20% of this 8,000 pound. Okay, the one thing is that uh, we mentioned that last time, we mm. want the units on both sides of the constraint to be the same. Okay, so 30% of F1, that's uh, the pound of corns contained from this feed one, plus 5% of F2, plus 20% of F3, plus 10% of F4. So that's, uh, corn, okay, so that's the total pound of corns. Should be greater than or equal to, they want at least the 20%, so 20% times a thousand. Can you, uh, sum up yeah. Yeah, if we define the greater than equal to it should be sum of F1, F2, F3, F4. Okay, but we know that it's the same. So let's let's just yeah, so for accuracy, we we'll just eliminate this. So our model is simpler. I'm glad you remember that. Okay, so that uh, this will be corn measured in pound again. So we check the um, unit on both sides. They are both a pound of corns. Okay. Now you can do the same for the grain and the minerals. I'll ask you guys to do that first, and then we'll talk about that. Okay. So do the grains and the minerals. My handwriting looks really naive on those tablets. I think I write much better on paper. <laughs> it's like a maybe 12 year old or even five year old writing. <laughs> 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 
Oh yeah. Okay, so you guys got the same? Okay, so when you look at it, you, you got a question? Well, I don't have the same. I didn't do the last one. Okay. Okay, why? Because it's, it's not necessary. It's okay. To find a bound of these constraints, right? Okay, so for the mineral one, right? Yep, the mineral one. Okay, so if we look at the mineral, the percentage contained in all the feed are at least 20%. Okay. And here it requires at least the 15%. That means that no matter how you mix them, the mineral um, requirement will be uh, met. Okay, so that means, I will still put it here, but that means this is, uh, I should test you, what's that? What, what kind of constraint in this one? I already give you some hint here. Redundant, okay, that's a redundant constraint. Because it will be fulfilled anyway, with or without it, it will be the same. So this uh, redundant constraint does not uh, play a role in defining the feasible region at all. Okay. So this, oh sorry, just uh, redundant. Oh. Con uh. Okay. And so besides these ones, don't forget that. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, the non-negativity. So f i are all greater than or equal to zero for all i goes from one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's my last constraint. I don't have enough space to write here. Just to summarize, so here um, on the slide I use x1234. So they represent the pound of feed to use in that mix. And to minimize total cost, which is some product of the unit cost and the decision variables. And the constraints are these ones. With uh, this being re. Okay, so that's that's a problem. And uh, for this one, we want to implement here um, in a class. Um, I'll ask you to do the same, follow the textbook to implement the Excel model um, yourself.